Today, we are going to be naming the ionic compound FeSO4. Now here's a little trick, guys. If you notice that you have three or more different elements in your, in your ionic compound or your compound in general, you know you're dealing with at least one polyatomic ion. So in this case, I have iron, which is Fe, I have S for sulfur, and I have O for oxygen. So I have three different elements. So it's always easiest to identify the polyatomic first and then go from there. But polyatomics are never going to be on the periodic table. You have to memorize them. But I just wrote the one that we're going to use down here. So just use flashcards or write this out or, you know, you know, uh, say it out loud and repeat it. Do whatever you got to do to memorize these, okay? Because they're never going anywhere in chemistry. So SO4. Whenever you see SO4, it always will have a negative 2 charge and it's always called sulfate. So here's SO4. Here it is right here. I found out that that's the polyatomic ion. So the only thing I need to identify is the iron. And iron is right here on the periodic table. It's in this group. And these are all transition metals. So it's a metal nonetheless. So it's going to be colored in blue, blue for metal on my little thing over here. Now we have everything accounted for. So let's start naming. The metal name comes first, and that name always stays exactly the same. So Fe is iron. It's just going to stay iron. Polyatomic comes next, right? SO4, and that name always stays the same. But you just got to memorize them, guys. So this would be sulfate. Now, since this is ionic, I say, do I need a Roman numeral in the middle? Well, it always goes by the, um, the metal. Since iron is in this little transition metal bracket over here, I do need a Roman numeral. This is where you probably need your Roman numerals, okay? Majority of these will need a Roman numeral. There's little exceptions though, because it's chemistry, right? Always exceptions in chemistry. But for iron, I definitely need a Roman numeral. And remember, the Roman numeral is always the charge of the metal. Well, now how are we going to get the charge of the metal? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take the subscripts and crisscross them back up to get the charges. There was one iron, and remember, this 4 is with the polyatomic ion, so if I just put a parenthesis over here, I now say that I have one SO4. Those are your subscripts. So the 1 crisscrosses up, telling me that SO4 was a negative 1 charge, and this one crisscrosses up, telling me that the iron was a plus 1. So now I have plus one for iron and SO4 for a minus one. But always double check. Does this make sense? Eh. I know that sulfate always is a negative two charge. So I have to turn this negative one into a negative two. But that's easy to do. I could just multiply this by negative, or actually multiply it by two, right? Negative one times two is now a negative two. But whatever I do here, I got to do to the iron. So I'm going to times that one by two. And now iron's true charge is a plus two, and that's the charge of iron. So that's the Roman numeral that you're going to put in. You're going to put a two and not a one. So this one was a tricky one, guys. So FeSO4 is just iron two sulfate. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, okay? Like the video if it did help you out, and if you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. Thank you so much for that. I hope you guys are doing well out there, and let's keep studying hard, okay? See you in future lessons. Bye-bye.